Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. According to Israeli Defense Forces in the south, Air Force fighter jets and helicopters attacked several terror targets at a Hamas training camp in the northern Gaza Strip overnight following a rocket fired from Gaza into Israel. The Iron Dome missile defense system above Ashkelon intercepted the rocket a little after 3 a.m. on Monday to the sound of red alert sirens. No injuries were reported, though, but regardless, the IDF holds Hamas responsible for any incursion of Israeli sovereignty. And this latest attack comes less than a day after a drone-shaped device and a large bunch of balloons carrying explosives landed in the carrot field in southern Israel on Sunday morning. When police bomb sappers examined the drone lookalike, which bore the name of Gaza's engineering college on the side, it exploded. Thankfully, however, police reported no injuries, and the IDF struck two Hamas military targets in the Strip in response to this attack as well. But this is far from the only attack of this type. Hundreds, if not thousands, of incendiary balloons and kites have landed in Israel. And nearly 3,000 acres, or 8 square miles, of forest and agricultural land in the Gaza periphery have been burnt up since March 2018, when the so-called March of Return riots began. Millions of shekels and damages have also been reported. So returning to his previous criticisms then, former Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman of the Israel Beitenu Party took to Twitter to blast the Netanyahu government again for having no consistent policy, no vision, and no plan to cut off Hamas's terror. Quote, there is no initiative, they barely react, end quote. Lieberman also chastised the policy of feeding Hamas with one hand and supposedly reprimanding them with the other. It was for these reasons that Lieberman first reportedly dropped out of the coalition in November as well, following the launching of hundreds of rockets from the Strip into Israel in just 24 hours. It was the largest Hamas missile barrage since the 2014 Gaza war. After over a week of speculations, the Shin Beit security forces revealed that the five Jewish miners that were detained recently are all suspects in the murder of 47-year-old Palestinian woman Aisha al-Rabi. Rabi was struck in the head with a stone in the passenger seat of her car while driving with her husband in the West Bank on October 12th. The Sheen Beit revealed that the arrested boys are suspected of terror offenses, including murder, and the agency also revealed that the five minors are students at the Pri Haaretz Yeshiva High School in the West Bank settlement of Rechelim. Three of the suspects were arrested last week, while two additional youths were arrested over the weekend, and the Sheen Beit further released two pieces of evidence showing the dangerous and, quote, extreme anti-Zionist nature of the minors. A video depicting Jewish teens burning an Israeli flag, as well as a flag with a swastika drawn on it, along with the phrase, Death to Zionists, that was uncovered in one of the suspects' homes. The Sheen Beit also said that on the Saturday morning after the attack in question, a group of far-right activists from the Yitzchak settlement drove to the yeshiva, thereby violating the rules of Shabbat, and the reason, they say, was so that they could coach the suspected students on how to withstand Sheen Beit interrogations. Further, since the initial arrest of the five minors, the Shin Bet said that it has had to deal with a smear campaign against it by interested parties, adding that all its investigations were done under the law and with oversight. Meanwhile, the widower of Aisha al-Rabi, the victim, spoke out on the attack. In an interview with Khadashot News, he said, quote, It won't bring her back, but I would like the killers to be arrested and put in jail so that there's justice, and so something like this doesn't happen again. United States National Security Advisor John Bolton arrived in Israel this weekend to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over the United States troop withdrawal from Syria and other pressing issues. Netanyahu hosted the senior aide to U.S. President Donald Trump at his residence in Jerusalem, and the two held a press conference in which Netanyahu praised the U.S. for recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and for backing Israel at international forums such as the U.N. But Netanyahu then also called on the American administration to recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Speaking after the Prime Minister, Bolton then said that he believed that under Netanyahu and Trump's leadership, we have the best U.S.-Israel relationship in our history. He also noted that it was a critical time for security in the Middle East, alluding to Iran's ambitions, reiterating the U.S.'s determination that it does not require nuclear capabilities. He also addressed the U.S. troop withdrawal from Syria, saying that the United States wants to make sure that the defense of Israel and our other friends in the region is absolutely assured. Following months and months of negotiations and delays, it seems that Israel will not be able to complete the $500 million sale of 12 F-16 Barak aircrafts to Croatia. An IDF Director General Udi Adam is now set to arrive in Croatia on Wednesday to inform the Croatian government in person of the deal's cancellation. The two countries signed on the sale last March, and Croatia has since given Israel until January 11th to get final permission from the United States State Department for the sale. Israel requires permission from the U.S. in order to resell the fighter jets to any third party. But since originally buying them from the United States nearly 30 years ago, Israel added advanced electronics and radar detection systems to the fleet of F-16s, and the United States would only sign off on the deal as long as Israel removed those additions. Those additions, however, were the main selling point for Croatia's defense ministry, and without them, the country doesn't want the F-16s at all. 
Knowing this, Israeli officials have doggedly been trying to change the United States' mind, having discussed the sale with many American officials, including with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Brazil just last week. But speaking to Ynet News, Israeli officials reportedly said that they believe the U.S. thinks Israel will unjustly profit from the deal. And that's why it's essentially the only thing Israel asked for from the United States recently that Israel didn't reportedly get. So now, despite allegedly giving assurances that the U.S. would eventually okay the sale, IDF Director General Adam and International Defense Cooperation Directorate Head Michel Ben Baruch have the unfortunate job of relaying the bad news in Zagreb. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.